You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Wilson Alexander had a sit down with Brian Kelly that got a, a lot of people talking because of what they discussed being a, a position move back inside for Harold Perkins. And I do want to delve into that. Um, subsequently, and clearly Brian Kelly's on the, the media circuit here before spring. Tigers open up spring football on Tuesday. Uh, Brian Kelly was on the hard count with J.D. Piquel. And uh, here before spring, it's very clear that... Um, one side of the ball is going to be the focus for these Tigers? Clearly, all eyes are going to be on, you know, our defense. We're young in some areas, but I think very talented. Um, I think we've got a great staff that will utilize our players in the manner necessary for us to compete at the highest level. So I think all eyes are going to be on, you know, what are we doing defensively? What's the improvement uh, from, you know, the defensive line? We've lost some really good players up front. Um to what's the maturation level of the back end of the defense where we played a lot of young players. And also finding who's going to fit where. So spring football, you're going to hear me say this a lot, veteran players have no need for spring. Spring football is worthless for Will Campbell. Does not mean a thing. He could just go sit on the bleachers and watch. Totally fine. It's meaningful for veteran guys that are moving into a starting role for the first time. Garrett Nussmeyer, very important for Garrett. Every rep he gets as the alpha, the number one in the huddle, leading the huddle, taking the reps, very meaningful for Garrett Nussmeyer. And young guys who are going to get their first taste, so when you get to fall camp, it's not brand new. Those are sort of the different layers. So when you look at LSU defensively, yeah, there are guys on the defensive line who, look, Jacoby and Guillory's a fifth-year senior. You don't need spring football. Whit Weeks, he's going to take a lot more reps. I need those reps for that guy. Secondary, a lot of those young players who were rotational pieces last year go win a job. It's important for them. Harold Perkins, though, stands as this giant outlier because when he came on campus as a five-star, he's been an impact player. He was a freshman All-America before the 2023 season. He was the preseason SEC Defensive Player of the Year. And what's so interesting about Perk, and we've talked about it, is statistically his numbers from year one to year two were almost identical. He played in 14 games as a freshman, 13 as a sophomore. Obviously, LSU played in the SEC Championship game, so he played one more game. 72 tackles as a freshman, 75 as a sophomore. Essentially the same. Identical number of TFLs, 13-13. Sacks, 7.5 as a freshman, 5.5 as a sophomore. Obviously, the Arkansas game was the big outlier. Four forced fumbles to three. Three passes defense to six. One interception each of the first two years. Essentially, produced the same amount. We've talked about this, and I know. I get it. He played more snaps as a sophomore but it's still kind of incredible that you could have a guy with that type of production to where it just didn't feel like you noticed. And people say, well, he played more snaps. I don't care that he played more snaps. You know, five and a half sacks, 13 TFLs is still five and a half sacks, 13 TFLs in the same number of games. So whether you did it in fewer snaps or more snaps is irrelevant. It's just, did you do it and make impact plays? The problem is, even if Harold Perkins made it... It recorded a sack on second down, it was third and 13. They converted, and you forget about the sack. That was the problem. He played an awful defense. So, in many ways, he vanished. But this is striking to a lot of people. Because of what Brian Kelly said to Wilson Alexander in The Advocate. And you may have heard, I'll read these quotes quickly for you about Harold, and essentially they're moving him back inside. Quote, he needs to be in the action. He needs to be the weak side linebacker. He needs to be in the box. He needs to be active in there. That's where he's going to start, and we've got to get him ready at that position. Kelly went on to say, we felt like we could manage it better with him there. We don't want to manage it. We want to get him in the position where he can impact the defense, where he will play at the next level. I think we owe it to him. 
whether it was scheme, whether it was our inability to get where we wanted him, he needs to be more involved in the linebacker fits inside. That's going to get, get him ready for the next level. It's going to make us a better defense, end quote. Okay. So, I told you last year on the show the decision to move inside was Harold Perkins' decision. Harold, his family, his advisors, whatever. It was not the LSU coaches. It was Harold Perkins. Harold wants to be Devin White. I told you this. Harold fancies himself as, at the next level as a three-down linebacker. Not a pass rush specialist. He wants to be a three-down linebacker like Devin White. The problem is, Harold Perkins is never going to be like Devin White. That's the problem. So Harold Perkins is getting very bad advice. And the LSU coaches want to keep this very dynamic player in their roster, and so they keep appeasing him. They did it last year. Harold Perkins, after his freshman season, could have left with NIL offers. Yes, teams tampered with Harold Perkins. Everybody tampers, do it through a third party, however you want to do it. Bottom line is, he stayed. He got NIL money and stayed. Great. Part of that was move inside. Spent all spring, all of all camp training inside. You went out for one game, and he was atrocious against Florida State. That's what it was. Not the kid's fault. He's 6'1", 220. He got caught in the wash. Not instinctive inside. He's an athlete on the outside. Go kill the quarterback. That's Harold Perkins. Not an inside linebacker. So they moved him to that nickel Sam roll. And you saw more productivity. But you also saw teams continue to scheme with Harold Perkins out of the box. It's what you'd expect. Hey, look, he made some great plays. The interception against Missouri changed the game. He's athletic enough to turn and run and to rush the passer and to help in run defense at times as well. But remember, if you're sitting here saying, like, it's Blake Baker coming in, changing how they're going to use... No, it's not. No, it's not. It's Harold Perkins doing the same thing again this year. He did last year, and the coaches are appeasing him. Matt House didn't forget how to use Harold Perkins. Like we, Matt House ha deserves a ton of criticism. He's gotten it. But when Harold Perkins was sensational his freshman year, who was the defensive coordinator? And linebackers coach. It was Matt House. Do you think Matt House just year to year got hit with that little flashy light thing from Men in Black and forgot how to coach Harold Perkins and how to use him? Of course not. B.J. Ojolari went to the draft. You needed inside linebackers. Perkins wanted to move inside. Okay. All right, we'll try the Herald. Sure. You're not going anywhere, right? Okay. Saw what happened week one. Hey, Harold. Look, bro. Okay, coach. I'll move back outside. And now here you go again. Do you think this is Blake Baker coming in saying, hey, I got an idea. Let's take this super dynamic pass rusher and move him to a position where he's like a fish out of water. That's what I want to do with him. Of course not. It's Harold Perkins doing the same thing again this year he did last year. He wants to be a three-down linebacker at the next level. That's what you keep hearing Brian Kelly say. The problem is he's never going to be a three-down linebacker at the next level. He's six foot, 220 pounds. I keep hearing comps. I know Blake Baker came here and did great with Damone Clark. Harold Perkins ain't Damone Clark. Damone Clark, 6'3", 245. Harold Perkins is never going to be Damone Clark. He's not an inside backer. Never going to be. I understand what Harold is thinking, but he's not that guy and never will be. So this is a terrible decision on all fronts. You're going to go spend a whole spring and a whole another fall camp working to get Harold Perkins as an inside backer. And it's never going to work. I was reading another thing today where they're talking about how Blake Baker has the star position. And there was a kid who last year, Tyron Hopper, played the star position for Missouri and became a Butkus uh, finalist. That's fantastic. The star position is what Perkins played last year. They called it something different, but it was the Sam. LSU called it a nickel Sam, where you turn and run and you cover. Brian Kelly's telling you, he ain't doing that in this defense. They're going to play him as the weak side backer, as the will. So you can make all those comps. They don't hold because that's not what they're telling you. My hope, my hope, best case, best case, pie in the sky dream scenario is Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen, six foot, 230 pounds, was a great inside backer, played at Livonia, instinctive player, came to LSU, 
we all know became the defensive MVP of the national championship game. First round draft pick and has had a good career so far in Baltimore and is going to probably get broke off somewhere this year. But Queens 230. Can Perkins put on 10 or 15 pounds of bulk, maintain his speed and athleticism, and develop an instinctive part of playing inside linebacker? Like, you don't even have to listen to me. You could say, what do you know? Slow, bald, old guy? Fine. Had Derry Beckwith on this show, former All-SEC linebacker who talked, who came here and talked about this last year when they were moving Perkins. He's like, bro, that ain't a good idea. Before, before Perkins took snap one in a football game at inside backer. And then when we saw it happen, we asked, hey, can he learn? Not, not in a year. That's a long process to let the game slow down and become instinctive. Instead of waiting for the play to unfold and react, you can do that in high school. You can't do it in the SEC. Because if you wait, you've got a 300-pound lineman in your pads and a 4-3 running back sprinting past you. You can't wait and react. You've got to be instinctive. And a lot of that is innate. And when you're undersized and not used to playing that position, that ain't a good recipe at this level. Sure as hell ain't a good recipe at the NFL level. So I get it. I understand. Brian Kelly's in a pickle. He's got this elite-level player that everybody knows has this dynamic skill set. And you want him on your team. And he could leave. The transfer portal would allow him to leave. And people would break him off. And I, they let him go. He would, he would go. He could. So you got to appease him. But in this instance, Harold Perkins is his own worst enemy. And my hope is Blake Baker can find a way to let the game slow down for Harold Perkins and maximize him as the will linebacker. Now, I'm going to tell you the other thing you ain't going to like. Here's the other thing that you, LSU fan, are not going to like. If you got Harold Perkins playing will, and you got Greg Penn playing inside as well, Guess who's not on the field? Whit Weeks, everybody's favorite. That's fewer reps inside for Whit Weeks. How you feel about that? I'm guessing not great because all I heard last year is why isn't Whit Weeks playing more? And I don't disagree with you. Look, that's why you got spring football. Go out there and try it, see how it works. But every rep Harold Perkins takes at the Will backer spot is a wasted rep. Because that ain't what he is. It's what he's, it's, he's never going to be that at an elite level. Like he can be as an edge rusher. So, look, I hope it goes great. I hope he surprises me and everybody else. But the reason we're all reacting to this, the way we are, like literally everybody is going, why? Didn't you do this last year? Yeah, you did. Why are you doing it again? So, again, it ain't Matt House. Matt House was the D.C. when he was an awesome freshman. It's Harold Perkins. He's the one that wants to do this. And it's a dumb thing to do because it's just not suiting his skill set. Maybe Blake Baker can maximize it. We'll see. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.